Uh, this is going to go over the geometry castle assignment called Regents Prep Number Three. Uh, so if you haven't done it yet, follow along, or if you have, see how I went through it. <clears throat> and um, hopefully, if you have any questions, uh, you can let me know, and we can sort it out. All right, enjoy. This is the castle assignment called Regents Number Three. I'm only doing the odd numbers. Uh, a, B is dilated by a scale factor of 5 over 2 centered at point P, uh, which statement is always true. Uh, P, A, give it a second here. P, A is going, uh, is it congruent to A, A prime? Uh, not always. Uh, so, how about... Uh, AB parallel to A prime B prime. So AB and then A prime B prime. And yeah, that's that's a, um, a property of dilations is that uh, a line dilated to another line, they're going to be parallel. So that's the choice. Number two, AB is parallel to A prime B prime. Coordinates of the endpoints QS are negative 9, 8, and 9, negative 4. R is on there so that QR to RS is in the ratio of 1 to 2. So here's, let's say, Q. Here's S. So we want R about right here so that it's 1, 2 to, um, and let me, that's kind of confusing, sorry. It's two sections, one section, two sec or I'm sorry, one section to one, then two. It says one to two. So one to one, two. Okay, in any case. All right, so the way I'm going to do it, negative nine, eight, that's our starting point at Q. Then we're going to need to go one, two, and then end at S, which is at nine, negative four. Now, where I get this three from is I take the one to two. And that's one section plus two sections, so three total sections. All right, and then the distance from negative nine to nine is up 18. From eight to negative four is down 12. We're gonna divide this into three sections. So we're gonna increase X by six. We're going to decrease Y by four. So negative nine up six goes to negative three. Up six more goes to three, and up six more goes to nine. Uh, the y values are going to go down four, so eight down to four, or down four to four, four down another four to zero, and we're looking for the first one, so negative three, four. Question five. Maybe. <clears throat> All right, question five. It says uh, we have got triangle ACD, DB is a median to AC, and AB is congruent to DB. So let's mark this up. So first it says AB and DB are the same. Uh, it says that DB is a median. So what a median does is it connects um, this vertex D to the midpoint. So B is the midpoint of AC, which then also means that A to B is the same length as B to C. And if you look at that, this has a little tick mark, so this gets a tick mark. Notice that these two, all, so they're all the same. Those three are all the same. So if the measure of angle DAB is 32, then what is BDC? So we're looking for this one here. All right, now uh, we're going to fill in the so if, if this is 32, I can say that this is 32 because this is an isosceles triangle. 
those two sides are the same, which means that these two angles are going to be the same, which means that I can find this one here by doing 32 plus 32, that's 64, and then doing 180 minus 64. Now that's 116, which means that I can actually find this one because that's a linear pair. So 116 and something add up to 180. So if I subtract, hey, 64. So this has got to be 64. Now if you take a look, this right here is an isosceles triangle because these two sides are the same, which means these two angles are the same. And one angle is taken up by 64. So what that means is that the other two are taken up by 116, but divided by 2. And that turns out to be 58 degrees. Question 7. Parallelogram ABCD, we've got AFGB, basically saying it's a line, CF bisects angle DCB. <clears throat> so that means that this angle and this angle are the same. DG bisects ADC. So that means this angle and this angle are the same. Uh, and CF and DG intersect at E, okay? Well, if angle B is 75, what is EFA? So we're looking for this one right here. Okay, so um, if angle B is 75 degrees, then this over here is also 75 degrees. Angles in a parallelogram, uh, the opposite angles in a parallelogram are the same, which means that since we have two angles that are the same, uh, if we divide 75 by two, we get that each angle is 37.5 degrees, right? Let me double check. Uh, quit. 75 divided by 2. Yep, okay. All right, so if that's the case, then let's see, where do I want to go from here? Oh, then what we can do is if angle B is 75, then angle A, this one here, has to be 105. And that's because. Um, in a parallelogram, if they're not opposite, then we call them adjacent angles. They have to be supplementary. So we needed something that added to 75 to get 180, so that angle A has to be 105. So that then tells us that, uh, where do I wanna go from here? I'll go across here. That means that these two have to be 105 combined. 105 divided by 2 is 102, uh, not 102, sorry, 52.5. Yeah, it's kind of messy, but all right. Um, so then that means, let's, let's take a look at this triangle. All right, so now how am I going to attack the rest here? So... Um, I know these two, okay, they're 37.5 degrees, and I know these two, they are 52.5 degrees, all right, uh, which means that we can then find angle E, um, I should, I, uh, ang uh, this angle right here, sorry, not just angle E, uh, by taking 37.5 plus 52.5, and I get 90, which means that this is 90, which means that all of these are 90. I know you can't really read that. Um, and then if you 
Another thing to notice is that since this is a parallelogram, this side and this side are parallel, which means that if we follow this, it makes a Z shape, which means that this is the same as this up here. So we have 90, we have a 37.5, which gives us 127.5 degrees, which means that this angle here is 180 minus 127.5. So 52.5, which means that the angle we're looking for is 180 minus 52.5, which turns out to be 127.5. So it might not be the, there's a lot of ways you could attack this problem, but there's a lot to it. Um, there might be an easier way. If you find an easier way, let me know. All right. Triangles A, B, C, and R, S, T are graphed on the set of axes below. Which sequence of rigid motions will prove that they are congruent? Um, it's going to be number two. So a rotation of 180 degrees at one zero. Um, so one, oh, sorry, wrong. There's one zero. The reason why that would work is if you take this, I know it's not exactly straight, but um, you can kind of see that that would be a center of rotation. It's like reflecting it over um, the x-axis, and then this line turns out to be x equals 1. But if you do that, you end up mapping ABC onto RST. <clears throat> Square math has a side length of 7 inches. Which three-dimensional object will be formed by continuously rotating square M-A-T-H around side A-T? So let's M-A-T-H. So if we take A-T and start swinging this thing around, all right, what's going to happen? It's going to make a cylinder. So it's going to be not a cone but a cylinder, and the diameter is not going to be 7, the radius will be 7, because 7 right here. So it's going to be a right cylinder with a radius of 7 inches. 13. Q, uh, quadrilateral QRST diagonals QS and RT intersect at M. Now I'm just going to draw something like this. I'm not saying it's... Anyway, so let's label this. We've got um, Q... R, S, and T, uh, Q, S, R, T, and M. Which statement would always prove quadrilateral Q, R, S, T is a parallelogram? Uh, T, Q, R, and angle Q, R, S are supplementary. T, Q, R, and Q, R, S. Would that always prove? No, sometimes. Q, M, so Q, M, equals SM, and QT equals RS. No, QR equals TS, so QR, TS, and QT equals RS. I think that's the one that's going to work, because Q, uh, the last choice, QR and TS, and QT being parallel... Yeah, number four doesn't work because it has to be the it has to be both congruent and parallel, not one being congruent and then one being parallel. So it's got to be number three. If both of them, if both sets are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. Question fifteen. Uh, here's a tree. Chelsea sitting near it. I believe it says she's eight feet from a tree. Um, to the top, uh, angle of elevation is 36 degrees. Um, if her line of sight starts 1.5 feet above the ground, so from here 
to here, 1.5 feet. Um, how tall is the tree to the nearest foot? Okay, so uh, if you're in my classes, we didn't get to trigonometry, so this is when you might want to skip or just follow along and get the answer, and then, um, anyway, but we didn't get to trigonometry. Um, what we have here is we are given the adjacent side um, compared to this 36 degrees. We want to find this opposite side. This, the line of sight side is the hypotenuse. So we have opposite and adjacent. So opposite and adjacent would give us the trig function tangent 36 is opposite x over adjacent 8. So if we wanted to find, I'm going to put this over 1 and cross multiply. x times 1 is x. Tan 36 times 8 is 8 times tan 36. So that means that, and I'm going to do that on my calculator, 8 times tan 36, 5.8, but remember that was 1.5 feet from the ground, so we have to add on another 1.5 feet, so 7.3, so it says to the nearest foot, so 7. Seventeen. <clears throat> Countertop for a kitchen is modeled with a dimension shown below. Eighteen by twenty-one inch rectangle will be removed. <clears throat> excuse me, removed for the installation of the sink. What is the area of the top of the installed countertop to the nearest square foot? So what I would do is change um, either the feet into inches or the inches into feet. Now because it says to the nearest square foot, I might change the inches to feet. So 18 inches turns out to be, that would be one full foot and then six inches, so 1.5 feet. 21 inches isn't to, it's a 12 and then another nine. Nine is nine twelfths of a foot, which is Three fourths, so 1.75 feet. All right, so um, I'm going to break this into a two foot by five foot. So this part here is 10 square feet. Um, this part would be, uh, let's see here, if this is two feet, then this is two feet, which makes from here to here um, six feet by two feet, so that's 12 feet, or I'm sorry, 12 square feet. The sink would be 1.75 times 1.5. So 1.75 times uh, 1.5, 2.625 square feet. So without with a sink being left in, the whole thing would be 22 square feet. We're going to take the sink out, so 22 minus 2.625, 19.375, so it says to the nearest square foot, so 19 square feet. <clears throat> uh, number 19, it's another trig question, so uh, one you could skip or guess. Um, but it is number one. Uh, if we make ratios, the sine of A would actually be opposite 12 over uh, hypotenuse 13. The cosine of B would be the adjacent 12 over hypotenuse 13. So it's choice number one. 21. Volume in cubic centimeters of a right square pyramid with base edges that are 64. All right, so it says um, right square, base edges are 64 centimeters. All 
all right, and a slant height of 40. Now, slant height means it comes down like this. That's the slant height of 40 centimeters. We want the um, volume, I believe, yeah. So to do volume, we actually need the height of the pyramid, which comes down and actually hits the base at a 90 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is take a cross section of this. So we have a bottom that had it's 64. Uh, the slant height is 40, and we need this, All right? So I'm going to actually change this 64 to a 32 and a 32. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find this side. Uh, so that is going to be um, the hypotenuse is 40. So 40 squared minus 32 squared, I get uh, the square root of 576, 24. So the height of this pyramid is 24. So that means that if I take the area of the base, which would be 64 times 64 times the height, so times 24, and then times a third, because it's a pyramid, I'll get the volume. So 64 times 64 times 24 divided by 3. I got 32,768, choice number three. All right, last odd one. Which transformation would carry this rhombus onto itself? Um, 180 degree rotation counterclockwise about the origin. That would make it um, look something like this. It wouldn't exactly look like it's not exactly onto itself, so it's not number one. The line half x plus one um, is this line. Um, maybe. Uh, reflection over the line y equals zero. Now y equals zero is actually the x-axis. That wouldn't map onto itself. Uh, and then the line x equals zero is actually the y-axis. Uh, I think that's the one right there. Uh, if you flip it over on that line, it's onto itself. So number four. All right, hopefully this is a help. Let me know if you have any questions and hopefully we'll see you soon.